psychiatric hospital or mental health ward isn't really somewhere where you want to find yourself ending up in. However, a lot of you want to know exactly what it's like. And unfortunately, I've been in three. So I'm in a good position to tell you exactly what it's like, what the environment's like, what the day-to-day -day routine's like, and what you can do whilst you're inside there. I found myself in a mental health ward because unfortunately back in 2019, I was sectioned for having psychosis. They section you if they think you're either a danger to yourself or to the outside world, for example, someone else. Each of the three hospitals I stayed in were very different, but I'm gonna tell you what's included in all of them so you can start painting a picture of what they're like. So let's talk about the environment. And starting with your bedroom, each patient has their own room, which is roughly eight to 12 square meters. I'm gonna put some pictures up because these are the only pictures I managed to take when I was in the hospital. But you have a single bed, the room's very plain, um, there's no real decor, you've got a storage unit, there is usually an ensuite, so you have um, like a shower, toilet, and sink but really there's not much to it so you don't have a lock on the door so it can feel a little bit odd at first and you feel like your privacy can seem to feel a little bit invaded however no one else as in the other patients in the hospital is allowed in your room they're very strict on that rule when you try and sleep at night so you'll have a window cut out on for example like a wooden door when you're trying to sleep at night they will get a torch, understandably so, and shine it through that window, I think it's every hour or two hours, just to make sure you're still alive and still breathing. And that really bugged me at first, because I'm not used to any light at all when I'm sleeping at home, so that kept waking me up and I was getting really frustrated. So coming out of your bedroom, you then have a corridor. That corridor leads you to all of the other rooms, they're all lined up, and then there are some other rooms, which are like functional rooms, chill out rooms and then the medication serving windows there as well. The corridor is very plain. There are sometimes posters up and flyers printed on the wall which are covered in a plastic film. In every hospital there will be a communal eating area. So it's a similar setup to a school canteen eating area. Basic tables made out of hard wood material maybe with a laminate on the top rather than the stalls you'd have which are usually attached to the school dining tables you do have your own chair that you can pull up. There is usually a standalone lounge area as well. In this lounge area, you probably seem to find more comfortable seating, so more sofas. There'll be a TV, which is a fair size to get people around it, where they'll show movies, you can actually change the channel, but the TV will have a thick plastic um, sheet over the front of it so no one can damage the TV. And it's often scratched so you, you're trying to actually watch the TV and all you can see is just the, the scratches and it's like a translucent screen. Actually I think one or two of the hospitals I stayed in did have a PlayStation or an Xbox so that's quite fun. You can't get online we just we just played offline there's a couple of controllers but it helps to kill the time. And then in two of the three hospitals as well there were smoking areas and just a nice outdoor area. If you just want to catch some sun, get some fresh air, and a lot of the patients, including myself, were smoking at the time, so you can do that there. So, moving on to the daily routine. There isn't much structure in the day, and it's probably intentional, but you often find yourself just walking around up and down the corridor, sitting, chilling, chatting to the others in there. Everyone can be in quite a different state, so there could be people in there with schizophrenia, psychosis like I had, severe depression. So, so yeah, you're either chatting with them, chatting with the staff, walking around, maybe going outside, smoking air again, or just chilling in your room. You can be on your phone. The bedrooms don't have any TVs, so yeah, you could be watching it in that communal area like I just mentioned. In the morning, the staff will come round with a sheet. This is probably my most exciting part of the day when there are lunch and dinner options. So you'll get two to three options. There'll be uh, one for like meat eaters and there'll be vegan options on there as well. Yeah, the food Food is very basic. Uh, it's kind of what you'd expect from hospital food, but at the end of the day, it's okay. It could be much worse. And if it's really that bad, you just use loads of the ketchup, salt and pepper to give it some flavor. The desserts are good. There'll always be a cake or ice cream or something like that. So it's not too bad. There are medication slots. I can't remember the exact time, but it felt like they were roughly around 6 p.m. So you'll all queue up to a window sort of portal where they'll have 
it's like a pharmacy inside that window. And then you queue up one by one at this window and they'll give you your correct medication in these little paper cups that look like those little ones that you put the sauce in in McDonald's. You put the ketchup or the barbecue sauce in. So I have your, where well, there could be one or two, three medication tablets or pills in that. You take that with some water and then you have to show them like, taken it proves that you haven't either like stuck it under your tongue or you've pretended you walk away flush it down the toilet another thing which happens each day again i can't remember on the time but it felt around midday is you'll have a health check they'll sit you down in your room or in the communal area wherever you are at the time they'll take your blood pressure ask you how you're feeling take your pulse and they'll just jot that down and keep it for their own records presumably to see if the medication's having any adverse reactions or to maybe get a gauge of your anxiety levels based on your pulse. Visitors and reviews. You can have friends and family come to visit you. They will have to book in certain slots and they will turn up, but you have to be taken away from this, the main bit of the hospital. But luckily you can go and sit with them for maybe a couple of hours if you like but staff will be in that room so just to make sure everything's under control once every few days to a week you'll have a review you'll sit down with professionals so there'll be therapists there'll be psychiatrists there'll be staff from the hospital they'll ask you questions and you'll be sat in a room you'll answer their questions and they assess your mental condition and stability based on your answers so in some of these meetings i was going i'm jesus and then I come out and go in a few days later, I'm St. Michael. They'd be like, they'd probably be thinking, this guy is going to have to be here for a lot longer. Hope that's given you a fair overview of what they're like. If you haven't watched my videos before, my name's Mike and I've experienced psychosis twice. I'm making these videos to help spread awareness of what it is like, make you feel more human if you've been through it, but also help people that are caring for those that are going through difficult times at the moment. And if you're curious to know what it feels like to have psychosis, I've made this video here. Thanks for watching.